Okay, sometimes I might give you the value of R and let you solve it. Okay. So, uh, you know, in the exam you don't have a lot of time, so I, I will have to uh, cut one big problem into parts, and one of the methods is to uh, first just ask you for the uh, initial equation, or another could be uh, you stop where you just get the recurrence relation. Okay. There are various ways to ask. So this, this could be one, one of the ways where you, you're asked to find a Frobenius solution for R equals to. So let's try this. So that if R is equal to 1, you're saying Y is sigma n from 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus r, but r is equal to 1. Okay. That's what it is. That's the Frobenius type. And then if you differentiate. So is the 7a1 x squared come into play with this? Okay. And differentiating one more time. Yeah, so when you make the referring relation, does this make a difference in it? I don't think you can make it. I just did it with some. Uh, minus one. So that's what you're going to get. Okay, now, uh, here, here's uh, something that's optional. See, for this one, if you plug in zero, you see that this gives you zero, right? Okay. So in that case, if you want, you can you can start from one. Okay. You don't have to for the free B. When you're solving with Frobenius, you don't have to. You can always start from a equals zero. Uh, but this this only happened because it's it, this is kind of like a regular ordinary uh, solution because uh, see this is like a zero x plus a1x squared, a2x cubed. So it's a regular power series with the very first term 0 and starting from something times x. And, and uh, therefore, uh, even if you try to solve this using just a regular power series solution, you will be able to find the solution to this, this thing. It will just turn out that the very first term, a0 will be 0 uh, if you didn't have this plus one. Yeah, but anyways, uh, I'm just trying to give you something to practice for Frobenius. So let's just say uh, r is equal to 1, and we're trying to solve this using Frobenius. OK, then uh, we plug everything in. x squared times sigma n equals to 0 to infinity, n n plus 1, a n x to the n minus 1, plus 5x sigma n from 0 to infinity n plus 1 a n x to the n then uh, we actually have to multiply this out so that you get the first one is x squared times sigma a n x to the n plus 1 n from 0 to infinity minus 5 times sigma n from 0 to infinity a n x to the n plus one. Now we multiply whatever that's in front inside so that this becomes n times n plus one, a n x to the n plus one. The next one, five goes inside, so you put it as five. x times x to the n, that's x to the n plus one. And from zero to infinity, plus sigma n from 0 to infinity, square x squared and n plus 1. They, if you add the exponents, you get n plus 3, right? Yeah. So you get x to the n plus 3, and then plus sigma negative 5 a n x to the n plus 1 for n equals to 0 to infinity. OK. Which one needs shifting? The third one. The third one. Yeah, I need to replace n by what? N minus, two. n minus 2. n should be replaced by n minus 2. And if you do that, this will turn into x to the n plus 1, just like every, everything else. This n has to be replaced by n minus 2. 
And if you set this n by n minus 2, you get the equation n minus 2 equals to 0. Solving this one for n, you get 2. So this should be replaced by 2. So we did the shifting. Now we start writing out the terms. And uh, as I said before, uh, n equals to 0 will turn out to be 0 because that's where the initial equation comes from. So when n is equal to 0, you, you can check. But, but if you actually write everything down, you're just going to get 0. Everything will cancel to 0. Now for n equals to 1, uh, that's a different story. For n equals 1, you get 1 times 2 times a1 plus 5 times 2 times a1. Uh, this starts from 2, so that doesn't, this doesn't produce anything at, at r1. Uh, n equals to 1 gives you minus 5a1. And all of these will have x to what power? x squared, because n is equal to 1. So that, that's what you're going to see when n is equal to 1. And then starting from n2 or greater, everything starts manufacturing terms. And therefore, you can just write it, put them all in a single factory. All the workers are in this single factory where Okay, let's just factor the ANs out. Plus 5 and plus 1. Minus 5. These are the ones with ANs. But there's also this uh, plus a and minus 2. And they are all factors of x to the n plus 1. So that's what you get. All right. Now, because the right side is equal to 0, this entire thing has to equal to 0. Therefore, this has to be equal to 0, and that has to equal to 0. Now, first, let's think about this one. What is this? Uh, that's uh, 2 plus 10 minus 5. 7a1, x, 7a1 is your uh, coefficient, right? What does that have to equal? Zero. This thing gives you 7a1 x squared, and that this coefficient of x squared has to equal to 0. That means a1 is 0. That's going to give you a1 is 0. So that's the first thing that you get from here. And and two and afterwards you get a recurrence for this. So let's try it. Okay, if I multiply this out you get n squared plus n plus five n plus five and then minus five a n plus a n minus 2 equals to 0. And then simplifying this, you get n squared plus 6 n times a n equals to negative a n minus 2. Let me erase other stuff. Okay. Remember, we, we had uh, a 1 equals to 0. We're going to use that too. So a n is negative 1 over n times n plus 6. See, I can factor the n out here, n, so you get n times n plus 6. That's being divided over there of n minus 2. And this is true for n greater or equal to what? 2. This starts being true for n 2 or greater. So let's try to plug in n equals to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and figure out what it means. So n equals to 2 says a2 is negative 1, 2 times 8 times a0. Now a3 is what? Negative 1 over 3 times 9 times a1. But what was a1? 0. Zero. So what is a3? Zero. Since uh, you're multiplying something by zero, it's zero. And uh, the consequence, you can see that already that a5 is something times a3. 
So since A3 is 0, A5 will be 0. A7 is something times A5, so A7 will be 0. So in, in this case, it's not always the, like this, but for this, que this question, it turns out that all the odd terms are 0. Uh, if you're curious to know, then uh, this is true if you have x squared something x and x squared and a <coughs> constant. If, if it's in that form, all the odd terms will disappear if you really want to know. So that, that only happens for very specific cases. Not, it doesn't hold in general. Yeah. All right, so you, you have this. And then that means uh, we just have to work with the, uh, the even ones. Okay, so for A4, what's that? Negative 1 over 4 times 10 of A2. And because A2 is this, you get negative 1. 4 times 2, uh, actually negative times negative is positive, right? And then uh, 8 times, uh, what's that? 8 times 10. 10 times 8. And then a, a6 will be negative 1 of 6 times 12 of A4. And putting 6 here and 12 there, you get 6, 4, 2, uh, 12, 10, 8, with a negative 1 of A0. Sorry, this should be A0. Okay. So that's what you get. And at some point, you start seeing this pattern, right? You don't have to. Uh, most likely, I'm just going to say find first five non-zero terms, and you get a0, a2, a4, a6. So once you get to a8, you can stop there and write down the solution. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just uh, find a8 and, and just write down the solution. So in that case, will be positive 1, because uh, the sign alternates. You can see that, right? And then there will be one more. So it'll be 8 times 6 times 4 times 2, and 14 times 10 12 times 10 times 8 of a0, and putting everything together into the original form. What was our original form? It was uh, y equals to sigma n from 0 to infinity of a n x to the n plus 1. That's what it was, right? And uh, if you write this out, this is a0 plus a1x, but a1 is 0, plus a2x squared. What is a2? It's uh, minus 1 over 2 times 8, a0x squared. So you really want to do it right now? Oh, sorry. Oh, so well. It should be a0x. I forgot the, about the plus 1 here. Okay, so sorry about that. So a0x plus negative 1 over 2 times 8, a0x cubed. And then the next non-zero one will be this a4, which is positive 1 over 4 times 2 times 10 times 8, a0, x to the 5, plus a6, which is negative 1 over 6 times 4 times 2, uh, 12 times 10 times 8 of a0, x to the 7, and then the last one will be the last one will be plus one over eight times six times four times two uh, fourteen times twelve times ten times eight a zero x to the ninth plus da da da. Okay, so that will be your for being used to. Which you just plugged it. Yeah, just, just plug everything that, that you, you obtained in and then just write down the first five non-zero terms and that's how much I will probably ask, okay? Uh, any questions? Yes? How did you know that the, the A1, when N was equal to 1, that that was equal to 0? Like so, so, in general, if you have AN, X to the N plus R, <coughs> n from 0 to infinity equal to 0. If, if this is true for uh, some x in an interval, then you, you know that all the coefficient must be 0. So uh, see, 
what we had was a bunch of so if I if I plug this this thing in, on the left side, what what you get is something times x squared and something times x cubed, something times x to the fourth. All of them equal to zero, right? That's what we got. This was the case when n equals to one, n equals two, and afterwards we had all these things, right? And there's a mathematical theorem which says that uh, if you write it like this and as a power series, then each individual coefficient must be zero for it to be zero for all values of x. So uh, w what I'm really saying is that this differential equation is true for some some values of x inside an interval. So uh, so if you had like a, if if you say this is true for x between zero to one. And then this should be true for x equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and infinitely many values. And then you can kind of see that the only way for this to be 0 for all that, all that infinitely many values of x probably means that each individual coefficient mu must be 0, right? I mean, can you, can you imagine any other way for this to be 0 for that, that many different values of x? No. So the only way you can have them have this entire thing equal to zero is that each individual coefficient must be zero. That's what we're doing. <coughs> and this, see, n from two to two and afterwards, we are able to write down in a single sigma. And n equals to one, we, we had something like this. But nonetheless, don't be fooled by its appearance. What we're saying is that if you organize it in terms of powers of x, then their coefficient must be zero. That's all, all we're saying. Any other questions? Yes. Well, where'd you plug it? Where'd you plug it into? Oh, uh, I mean, what is this? This is n equals to zero means it's uh, a zero x to the zero power. No, zero plus one, which is x to the first power. Plus when the next one is n equals to one, so it's a one x to the one plus one. Plus when the next one is any a. a n equals to 2, so a2 x to the 2 plus 1. And you have all that, and we also know that a1 is 0, so that goes away. a2 is this thing. So all I did was I just plugged everything in. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, that, that's what you'll be expected to do.